Good morning, Raboisai. Ah! You didn't just see me, but also you was Mordechai. Today's share is being sponsored by GE. Gabriel Emmanuel. I'd like to sponsor a day of MDY to welcome the new MDY members from London. Our local WhatsApp group has grown from three to more than 30 members. Wow, unbelievable, 30 members in London. Please get in touch with Yosef or Yeshua for details to get added to the group. We're looking forward to arranging a seam on the Sunday following the end of Yuma in a local restaurant and as always, huge Thank you to Reb Eli and his fantastic team. We are also going to have a Siyum Be'ezer Hashem Thursday night at the Kotel, at the Tiv Aryeh. So sign up and sign up fast. There's only 80 spots. <clears throat> okay. Here we go, Reb Oisai. This one is from Avi Friedman from East Boca, MDY Miami member. I wanted to email a thank you for all the amazing shurim so far. And Mr. Hashem, Hashem should give you clap to keep on spreading time for many years to come. On main. I originally heard about your shir from my brother-in-law, Shaya Hecht, but only started because of the free Gemara. You hear? Some people come to learn Torah for the free Gemara. So the free Gemara works. Later on, I found out that both my father and my cousin, Yaakov Badner, listened to Yashir, as well as my Magid Shir and East Boka, Rabbi Aryeh Esterson. I wanted to share with you the power of the Yoimi. Due to a lot going on in the last eight months, Baruch Hashem, good things. I've been neglecting learning the daf consistently. I'd finished brachas on time, but Shabbos, Erev, and Shkolem, I had fallen three months behind on. I got inspired from the Gemara offer to commit to staying consistent, and Baruch Hashem, I am still up to date. But there was another impact that the Yoimi had on me. I had neglected to do Shnai Mikra since Bereshis and felt overwhelmed to even start at finishing Shnai Mikra for the past 15 years. Where it's sad, and I finished Parshis when I started learning Yuma. It inspired me to catch up both on the Yoimi and Shnai Mikra. In a matter of less than two months, I'm happy to report that I finished every single parsha up to date and I'm caught up to today's daf. I pounded, this is Givaldic, I pounded through three to four Shurim videos a day and used an art scroll for Shabbos and Yontif, even finishing 15 blot of Gemara on Shavuos, on the two-day Shavuos. Now I'm careful to watch the Daf every morning and do Shnai Mikra on Friday mornings to make sure I never fall behind like that again. You know, a lot of people spoke about Shnai Mikra that because of Daf Yoimi, they realized you could skip a parasha and keep on going. It's not about the Daf, it's about the Yoimi, it's not about the Shnai Mikra every single day. Sometimes it's better to skip a parasha. He's saying that he made it all up. Okay, it's a different angle. Huh? Not in Shnai Mikra. It doesn't work in Shnai Mikra. Therese is Chicago, the Free Gemara Initiative, as it gave me the push to recommit to my Ruchnius. Thanks. Avi Friedman, East Boko, MDY Miami member. Now, for a little bit of Litsanas. This is from Avi Sherman. Along the lines of things I cannot believe I heard of Ellie saying Shear, I think this morning tops them all. So much so, I had to pause the video before Shear actually started and write this email to quote you. I'm Mamish Shoita. Can you say that? It's I'm sitting on the side watching it. I want to be mishtatav also. I'm going to be mishtatav solidly. With the most disrespect I could possibly give my Rebbe, you are indeed a shaita. Not because you say, I'm, I'm reading what he said. Not because you say you haven't been mishtatav in the Gemara campaign by actually sponsoring Gemara, but because you're the man behind the guy with the Leo. How dare you be so modest and think that you're not being mishtatav. Anyone can send someone a Gemara and anyone can commit to watching Shir for seven days in order to receive that Gemara. But it's your personality that gets them to return on day eight. And keeps us all coming back to Shir day after day. You've heard this all before, but I'll say it again anyway because we know how much you love to hear it over and over. The way you prepare the Shir, the way you give over the Shir, the charts. The only, listen to this line, the only happened to Reb Eli stories. The only happened to Reb Eli stories. The schmoozes, the family-like atmosphere that we all are. The video editor from you allowed to add dancing geckos and flying unicorns to your videos. No, Yosef didn't tell me to write that. You can't get this anywhere else, and it's all because of you, Reb Eli, with the help of the Bernstein, of course. Shaita, shaita indeed. SMH. SMH is what? Shaking my head. Shaking my head. It also could be so much hate. I'm not joking. It is. Some people use that as much. Anyway, I hope. I'm going to. All the best for a good Shabbos and meaningful Shiva Asur which is today, Avi.
So, I'd like to address this uh, very interesting email. So, this is, I, I, I look at it as, as a shidduch. The guy, the shadchan that, that sets the couple up, he initiates the whole marriage thing. Now, the husband has to do a good job, keep the marriage on track. That's me. But the guy that put them together, that's the shadchan, that's the guy that gave the Gemara. And I'm saying, I want to be part of it, why not? I want to, I left real estate, didn't leave a, 100%, but 99%. So that I could start accumulating a little uh, guilt, a little money for Eilam Hanes. I think it's a great business opportunity for me, so that's why I did it. Listen to this. I mentioned that Ellie Dykeman gave 100 Gemaras, that's $2,500. A friend of mine, Shalom Kushner, who heard it, who's very friendly with Ellie Dykeman, he sent a voice note, he says as follows. He says, Ellie Dykeman, he's a successful guy, he's a therapist, but he's not a millionaire, he's not. If he went out of his comfort zone and gave $2,500, I'm also giving $2,500. So Ellie Dykeman, without knowing it, caused Shalom Kushner from Borough Park to give 100 Gemaras. Daniel Rubinoff gave 50 Gemaras. It's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. For Boy Sai, I was asked to announce that, what is it called? MDYsponsor.com. I believe that's where you could, if you want to give Gemaras. MDYsponsor.com. You can be part of this amazing, look at this email. The guy... Started learning that because of the Daf Gemara, the Gemara Initiative. That's that. What else do we have? Okay. Finally. Oh, Ellie. You ready, Ellie? We have with us the schos of having Ellie Ehrman every single day, every morning. And here's the picture of him on the way to me rolling this file with the gear. Unbelievable. Here he is, right over there, Ellie. Gary, yeah? No? Another tzaddik from our shir, Rabbi Tversky in Chicago, took out the CEO for Slurpees, Nachamo Slurpees. It's good to... Uh, now you're going to go on him, not on me. And then we have Dr. Factor, Shlomo Leitner. This is how the whole thing in London started, right? You were at this, what is it called? Castle. Windsor Castle. And he's wearing this cap, and this tzaddik walked over him and said, what? Eight minute daf, and that's how the whole conversation started. So let's get together in a restaurant. And then 13 people or whatever showed up at the restaurant, and everything was gewalded. And going back to the art school story, here's another. Um, Shlaimi Klein, when he ordered all those Gemaras, he didn't realize that the guy in art school, poor guy, I.E. Morrison, this is him, in art school, he, his job is to take a thousand, just in the last week, hundreds of Gemaras, each one to put a a sticker in it, and a letter in it, and mail it, and the whole thing. It's a lot, a lot of work. Take the credit. I don't know how it works. Anyways, he started learning the daf. He says, he's, he, that's it. And we got him without giving him a free Gemara. I'm hoping Arshwa gives him a free Gemara. Maybe, maybe, who knows. All right. Ari Morrison, Yishkoyach. Says the Gemara. We're smack in middle, amazingly. We're in the middle of the sugi of the three weeks. Here we are. Shavasa Batamo's morning, and we're talking about the three weeks. And it says in the Pasuk over there, Vani Vasi, my Vani Vasi Bidvarecha. Gavriel Amalach says, I came in, I went back to where I belong in Shemayim. I got kicked out for a second. I came back in because of you, Daniel. What's going on here? So Gemara goes into very long Arich, it's almost a full Ahmad. I the whole story of what happened over there. I got it though. Very, very sad story. One of the most despicable acts in Yiddishkeit. The 70 people there, and you have Yaznio, Vish, Miketarto, Biodoi, Vatar, Vasar, Ananak, Toiris, Oila. You got, you have, they're bringing Toiris for Avedizaro. So he got dragged by his hair. Somebody grabbed him by his hair and schlepped him. He was in Bavel. And I went flying all the way from Bavel. And I ended up Oh, we don't have the chart. I wish we had the Beis Hamikdash chart. Too late. Um, so basically, they bring him and they toss him and they bring him into the Beis HaMikdash. He comes in from the northern gate. Asher Shom Moishov Semelak Kino Amikane. Daf Ein Zayin 
Interesting. Wow, I just realized now. Avedah Zara. It doesn't get any worse than this Maisa Avedah Zara. You want to remember this daf? I, I really didn't think about this. Unbelievable. Daf Avedah Zara. This is the worst act of Avedah Zara I've ever heard in my life. He's there in the Beis Hamikdash. Inside, Vinei Pesach Hechol Hashem Beinu Ula Mo Beinu Mizbeach. You remember that picture? You have the Ula on top and the Mizbeach right below it. Ke Esrim VeChamisha Ish. There's 25 people. Achoreim El Hechal Hashem. Their rear is facing the Hechal, the Ula, Upneim Kedma, and their face is to the east. What are they doing? They're worshipping the sun. They're bowing to the sun. Ask the Gemara to get to the most terrible thing ever. You know what? Give me that base right over there, please. Here. Once we have it, might as well use it. This was built by Zalman. No, uh, Zalman Tzvi. Why is my hechel moving? Okay. So they were standing right over here. I don't know if you see. Oh, phew. Zawin Tzvi didn't build this. Uh, this, is the hechel, this is the ulam, this tall building, the hechel is inside. And here's the mizbeach, I don't know if you can see. And they're standing right over here. They were facing eastward. The sun was over here. And they're bowing over here. Ask the Gemara. So obviously if they're facing east, then the rear is to the Kodesh HaKadoshim, to Eichel Hashem. The way I vision it, they all maybe even made themselves have like diarrhea. And they relieve themselves bedafka towards the base of English. To me, it's a lotion of matrizim, like it spritzed out. Bikoyach. Unbelievable. A tremendous, despicable, disgraceful thing. Unbelievable. Not only are they worshipping the sun in the base of but they're also relieving themselves towards the Kodesh HaKadosh. It's unreal. How low a person could stoop. And that was it. Amalek HaKashbor Michal. If you recall, we had in our Masechta, maybe Levi remembers what Taf. Michal is the top Malach. And Mimini Gavriel Umismoili Rifal. But Michal is number one, he's in the center. Gavriel is less, that's what we learned. Here goes Levi, he's looking it up. Michal, Michal, Sarcha Umascha. Your nation went bad on me. Look at this, how, it's, it's Narevayim. So I saw this word last night in the Ben Yehoyada and I ignored it. But I got an email today from Ari Weinstein, who I love, from Farak, who sends me Gavali, and says, I ain't in the Ben Yehoyada. So I looked again, and it was actually much better the second time I looked at it. And the Ben Yehoyada says beautifully, he says, this is Michal and Yisrael. And if you take out the Yud Aleph Lamed, and the Yud Aleph Lamed from both, you left with Mach and Rosh. Those are the words that we had yesterday. If you remember, Zacha, then it's Rosh, Loi Zacha Nasser Rosh, Mach and Rosh. So he says, so what he left with? These, this word, Keli Keli. Keli Keli, that's the double lotion of Keli Keli Loma Zaftani. Baruch, why did you leave me? And that comes from, take out the Keli and the Keli, you left with Mach and Rosh, okay. So you have a Chesil Shavart or a Ben Yadavart. Why do you want to destroy Kla Yisrael? What about the good guys? I don't care about the good guys. Why not? So the Taisi Shonim over here, if you look in the bottom, I looked and searched, and that's what he says. He says, because the, the good guys didn't do a mecha. Oh, it's not proper to tell people, you mind your own business. <laughs> You're going to tell people what to do and how to act in front of Akash Baruch. You don't say anything. It's not American. It's not an American thing to do to go over to somebody and say something. They weren't moicha. You're not moicha. You go. I'm going to destroy everybody together. Miad vayoyim eloish. Levush abadim. What's levush abadim? Says Rashi in the entire Daniel. Levush abadim is Gavriel. 
So he tells Michal, let's not get confused here. Michal, Michal, your nation, I guess he's considered the sire of, if there is one, he's the top guy, he's the top mala. Your nation, no good. Gavriel, you Gavriel, I need you to do a job for me. These are things that obviously we don't understand at all. This is Maisa Merkava. I need you to go between the Galgal, El Tachas Lekruv, between them. And go grab some coals between the Kruvim, sort of a Malach. Lamed Zayin. That's where it's Michal and Gavriel. And what's the, what's the simon over there? Lamed Zayin, laser tag. Zichru, the Zichru program, if you want to remember Dapim. Huh? Didn't work that time. Okay, but say that. Sometimes yes, most of the time yes. I need you to take these coals and throw them on Yerushalayim. So this is where he went wrong. You see it in the Pasuk. He didn't do it himself. Hashem said, you, Gavriel, go take the coals. Instead, what does he do? He sends one of the crew of him. He tells the crew of, you get, get me coals. So he grabs the coals. Vayisa. Who? Gavriel went. I'm sorry. He gives the coals to the Levush Abadim Gavriel. And he takes the coals and he leaves. What happened here is that the, the coals became a little, uh, they lost some of the heat. It was cliche. Klisheni is not mevashal Shabbos. You want to make a coffee in Shabbos, you have to use Klisheni, right? So because the Kruv lifted up the coals and he gave it over to Gavriel, it lost a little bit. And we're lucky. Why? If it, that wouldn't have happened, no one would be left from Klai Yisrael. This uh, Gavriel, Gavriel Asher, Keses Bimosnov, translated the slate is in his loins, on his waist, Meishiv Dover Leymar, Osisi Kasher Tzivisan. Comes back, I did your shlichus. Like, I did everything you told me to do. Om Rabbi Yechanan, Baisa Shah, Haitzu Le Gavriel Machoya Pargoid. So remember, we started a whole sugya that Gavriel says, because of you, because of your words, I was brought back into the Pargoid. I was brought back to where I belong. So over here is where they kicked him out. They, they, they said, Arois, you're gone. Umachiu, not only did they they, they kick him out of the class, they kicked him out of the paragraph, Umachiu Shitin Pulse de Nura. They gave him 60 whacks with a, a fiery whip. Omrulay, Iloya Vato, Levato. Memon of Shach. If you didn't do the Tzivi of Akash Baruch, Akash Baruch said, destroy your slime. If you didn't do it, Nunu, it's one thing. And I would say, you know why you didn't do it? Because you're waiting for the Haroin Af Hashem to go down a little bit. You're waiting for Akash Baruch Hu, so to speak, to calm down. And then maybe Akash Baruch Hu would, would, would change his mind and I would save Klai Yisrael. Yovato, but if you did it, but you didn't do it as you were commanded. You messed up. You went to the Malach. Now, it's on the back of the Masifta. Somebody brings over there, I forgot who it was. He says that he had an excuse, Gabriel. I can't touch it. It's too hot for my hands. They're too hot. Elamai, you could go to the Kruv. But Kush Baruch didn't say go to the Kruv. So you could say, listen, it's too, I can't do it. It's not, it's not a job I could do. You, you asked me to do something I can't do. Why did he have to go out of his way and find somebody to do it and get it done? And that's the Taina. Okay. Void. Dovato. Lesloch. Eimashiv. Melakalkala. Why did you come back and say, oh, the boy I did exactly what he told me, I destroyed your line. So here's a big concept in Yiddishkeit. It's not a good thing, it's against halacha, to tell somebody, oh, you know, so-and-so died. It's against halacha. And there's a whole discussion, can you tell people that their loved ones died? Now, if it's going to cause them damage, of course you could. The body, you have to take care of the body. But it's time to go around saying, nice, oh, you heard, 20 people died in Miami. It's awesome. We're not so careful with it, but... A Meshiv Malkakala. There's even a, a, a thing I saw by Rabbi Zilberstein. He said, Could you tell the Shatchan you don't want to go out with somebody? 
Or, and he says from the Chazanish, the Chazanish says, you just, you don't answer, and the guy understands by himself. But they say, no, I'm not going out. That's a kakala. That's, that's something not nice. You don't, you don't say not nice things. Aisuli Dubiel. Dubiel is a lotion of doiv, a beer. Now the parsim are beers. They're, they're, the, they're like beers. So their sar, their malach is called Dubiel. Sorry the parsim. And they put him in charge instead of Gavriel. Now Gavriel is punished. They kicked him out. So they put the non-Jewish Sar in there. Dubiel. 21 days. What's the 21 days Rabbi Yisai? Three weeks. These are three weeks we are in right now. These are three weeks that Daniel fasted and, and changed his diet. He didn't eat meat and wine and good bread, then bathe himself the three weeks. Okay, that's the time that he was in charge for 21 days. They gave him 21 kingdoms. And also, Rashi says, Parvas is a port. Again, he says the word port. The Mashig, Mashig is royal. A royal port because there's a lot of uh, valuable gems in the port. Um, what are they called? Pearls. Thank you. Okay, that's what they gave him. Omar. So now that he's in charge, he says, Ksivili Lisro, Bakrogo. I want to be, I want to get taxes from the Jews. I'm in charge. Kosvole. They said, okay, go ahead, take taxes from them. I need the, the rabbis also. It's not just enough that the Jews, I want everybody. So they said, okay, no problem. And they want to sign it. So Gavriel is standing behind and he sees what's going on. So he said this whole puzzle. What's going on here? What does it mean? Like the Rambam says, that the way you zoich of a Torah is menaded chena, when you don't sleep and you learn Torah without sleeping a lot. And the same thing for the women. Even the women, says Gabriel. Look at these women, the wives of the Tamil Chachamim, they wait for the husbands to come back from learning so they don't sleep that much. And therefore, they're Zoycha they, Lailam Abba, and you're going to allow this bad guy, Dubiel, start taxing everybody and make everybody Meshuga. They didn't care. Omar Lafanov. So Gavriel sees Taina number one didn't go. Let's, let's keep on going. If we had a scale, and you put all the chachmei ha'umas ha'olam, the goyesha, the, 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 the non-Jewish chachamim on one side. With Daniel is chamudoiz b'kavshni, and you put Daniel on the other side. Le'nimza machriyas kulam. Isn't Daniel going to outweigh them? Omer kosh boruchu, mi hu zeh shemelamet tzchus al-bonai. Who is this person that's melamet tzchus, tremendous mid of limut tzchus? Omer lefon of rebani shalom Gavriel. Not that kosh boruchu didn't know. You wanted to hear it? Gavriel. Omer lehem yavoy, let him come in. And that finally... Explains what it says in the Pasuk. We started off. I, Gabriel, got let back in to Gan Eden because of you, Daniel. Now, from over here you see the idea that the person acts, Daniel acted three weeks. He, he didn't eat. Da, da, da. What he doesn't realize is that his actions have an effect somewhere else. Gabriel is an oil of and he's talking, having a discussion with the Kishbar, and he's bringing up, Gabriel is bringing up Daniel. Daniel has no idea. And he was, now, it happens to be that we know the story, and Daniel found out about the story many times. There was once a kid, I read somewhere, kid walked over to a non-religious Jew here in Israel and told him, little cute kid, he says, how much money do I owe you? I stepped on one of your oranges. He was schlepping a box of oranges, and the kid crushed it. He says, what? He says, yeah, I want to pay you. I crush your orange. And the guy went home and he said, listen, I want kids like that. It's like, kid, and he became a Baal 
So then that kid doesn't know. That kid has no clue. He went later on, Achimeves, and they said, you know, because of you, there's a whole mishpacha, dari daris of, of, of people that are religious. Eli Dykeman donated 100 gemars. He doesn't know. He didn't know at the time. Now he knows. The wrong corn blue. Had a rough year, no? I don't know. I don't know. I have, I have no idea. I'm assuming. What is he? He's a tour guide, right? I don't want to embarrass him here. He's a tour guide. We know what happened to the tour guides last year, this, this year. It's still bad. 50 Gemaras. Guy comes. 50 Gemaras. I want to be Zaycha. So you don't know. You have no idea what, how you have a on somebody else. You take action here, you have a on somebody else. You give a Gemara here, you don't know what kind of family you're going to change. I'm not just stop pushing this Gemara thing. I really believe in it. Anyway. What happened? I need, I need, I need water, Yeshua. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the effect that we have sometimes on people without even knowing. I'm saying, like, because of Nevuah, because of Nabi, we know that it's because of Daniel that he changed everything in, in Oilam Hamas. But if, we, if there was no Nevuah, it happened and nobody would know anything. Omer Lehem Yavoy. Shinam Ani Basi Vidvarech. Omer Lu. Leil. Bring him in. Ailu. They brought Gabriel back in. Asa Ashkechel Dubiel. The Nokat Law. Now he's already inside. All of a sudden he sees Dubiel with the, the letter that says you can take taxes from the Jews, from the Rabbanon. Biyode. Boyle Mir Mir Mir. So he goes to Chapet. He's going to be physical over. He's going to grab it. Dubiel saw it's not a good thing. Bala. He swallowed it. Some people say he swallowed it before it was actually signed. It was signed. But by swallowing it, he erased the signature. Whatever it means. These are, this is all Kabbalah stuff. That's why if you look in Iran, there are some Jews that pay taxes and some don't. It's based on this. Oh, he's smiling because he's Yeshua is from Iran. You know that. Did your family pay taxes? Of course, of course they paid taxes. Well, they didn't have to. Duble, what's his name? He swallowed the thing. You don't have to pay taxes. Some people mix it up. They think it means also America, whatever. But no shaykhs. The Sar of Yovan. Ave Ave, it's a lotion of crying. They're crying that they shouldn't, they shouldn't rule in Yisrael, and nobody, nobody, nobody really cared. Now we're going back to Yom Kippur. Fine, that's the end of that story. How do I know you can't bathe yourself on Yom Kippur? So you're talking about Avyasar. Avyasar escaped with Dabana Melech. And later on, in the time of Shlomo, Shlomo was taking over, Avyasa decided to go to the wrong side. He, su- he decided to, to support Adoniyo, right? The older brother. So now Shlomo Melch was upset at him. And he said, You deserve to die. Rebelling in the kingdom. But I'm not going to kill you. Why? You were there with my father when he was escaping from my other brother, Avshalad. And Isanisa, you inflicted on yourself the Tanesim, the Inui that my father had. Everything he did, you did with him. So since you supported my father then, I'm going to spare your life. And what did David do? Number one, Raiv. He was very hungry. Oyev, we don't know what Oyev means. Bitsame is very thirsty. In other words, Bamidbar. He's in the desert. Those three things, you, Evyasar, you've done with my father, I'm going to spare you. Ra'ev, Melech, didn't have bread, some of didn't have water. Ra'ev, Melech, Lav, Melech, it doesn't mean he didn't bathe himself. Vidil, Melech, has sandal. Now in Hebrew, Ayef means tired, but not here. Ela, Rabbi Yitzchak, Melech. So it's not a good Ra'ev, because maybe Ayef means they walk the desert barefoot. Very, very painful. So, there's another pasuk. Mayim karim al nefesh ha Great pasuk. It's like cold water on a tired soul. So, that's the, the idea of rechitza. 
Vidilma Mishtiya, maybe it means cold water. <laughs> You're very thirsty in the desert. You want to drink cold water. Mixiv bin nefesh ayem. You don't put it in your body. Al nefesh, it's on your body. It means you're taking a shower. Al nefesh ayem fixiv. Okay, so that's that. Unida sasandom and all on. How do you know you're not allowed to wear shoes on Yom Kippur? The chsiv. If a dove is oiled by malazesim, he's going up parazesim. Oiled vaycha, he's climbing and crying. Veroish loy chafui, and his head is covered. Vahoylech yachayv, and he's going barefoot. Yachayv imai. La minil sasandol isn't the mean. Doesn't mean he wasn't wearing shoes. Vedumer misusio. Umeratko, he was always used to riding a horse. He didn't have a horse and a, and a whip. Maybe that's what it means that he's, he's barefoot. Go and take your shoes off. Now, Yishaya didn't have a horse and a whip. So, is obviously talking about going barefoot. So, he was without a shoes, without shoes. And it says, Yochev, Yochev means without shoes. Yochev means without shoes. Yochev means without shoes. Maybe, no, maybe he had shoes, but they were just very holy. They had a lot of holes in them. It makes a lot of sense because it says, he's naked. Now, obviously, he wasn't walking around naked. They had a lot of patches, terrible clothing. They had a lot of patches, these shoes. That year, I had a nevoah that should do tshuva. That they shouldn't have to go to Gullus. And if they go to Gullus, they're going to go barefoot. Now, how do you go to Gullus? You don't go with shoes that have patches. It means no shoes at all. You should prevent yourself from going barefoot. In other words, going to Gullus barefoot, meaning without shoes at all. So over here, it has to mean without shoes. So the word Yachev means no shoes. Don't tell me it means shoes, but really bad shoes. Don't talk shtusim during the day. You hear a boy say, it's a problem to talk shtusim. It could bring to bad things. Not having drink. How do you know that that's also? How do you know that it's considered one of the inflictions? The chsev, love and tells Yaakov, I'm warning you, don't be in ma'ana my daughters. So look at the pasuk. Number one, imta'an is b'noisai. Don't inflict them with pain, meaning miniyas tashmish. Vimtikach noshim, and also don't take more women. Don't get married to other people. Lilu nishmas, uri b'matasyo. And for the success in Gashmis and especially ruchness of his grandchildren. Dafayin zayin amad beiz. Avay de zara amad beiz. Imta'an is b'tashmish. So obviously imta'an means from marital relations. And do not marry more women. As the Gemara of Maybe it just means that Imtana, what does I what do I mean, Imtana? I didn't explain myself. I meant from Imtikach. Do not, don't cause my daughter's pain by taking more women. Mixiv Imtikach. Imtikach? It doesn't say, it doesn't, it's not an explanation. Imtana, Imtikach. Vimtikach. It's an additional thing. And if you will, take. So in other words, it has nothing to do with the first statement of imtana. One is imtana, one is imtikach. It's not, imtikach is not an explanation to imtana. Okay, I agree with you that it's two separate things. But perhaps, they're both talking about additional women. We know that Yaakov Avinu was married to Bilal and Zilpah. Not married, they were people action. So he's warning him, do not make Bilal and Zilpah real wives. And also, don't take Additional wives. The Khalatsar is asking now, just like, so it's all the same, but Imtan is just saying, do not make Bill and Zilpa real wives. Says the Gemara, that can't be. For instance, if I tell you, don't break the window of my car. And if you do, I will break your bones. And also, don't touch my car. Because if you touch my car, I will break your bones. So that makes sense. So I start with, with the, the heavy thing. And I say, and even the lighter thing, I will this. So over here also, it should have said, don't marry new women. That's really heavy. And also, by the way, don't even think about making Bill and Zilpa your wives. 
But if you say the opposite, don't make Bill and Zilpa your wives. And also, by the way, and don't make real wives, <laughs> new wives. It doesn't work. It doesn't flow. First you say the really heavy thing. And by the way, I'll be very upset even if you do the lighter thing. Don't start with the lighter and go to that. That's what the Gemara says. So that doesn't fit. Even the act itself is considered an affliction sometimes. If it's ba'inas or whatever. Different ways that it could be considered an inuit. Not preventing it, but actually the act itself is considered inuit sometimes. He raped Dina, and that's considered an inuit. The act of raping. No. So this is very interesting. You have to see Rashi. That once, and according to the Ritva, he explains Rashi. Once Shechem was boil her, now she already had a taiva for him, and withholding that, the second act, that's the Inui. So it's not the actual act, it's the preventative one. That's the Inui. Mebisa Kheris. Rashi over here says another pshat. Mebisa Kheris means, Bia Shalai Kedarka. And Rashi doesn't like it. He says, I don't like the pshat. But what's interesting is, in Chumash, when he says, when Rashi talks about this, he, does, he says the pshat he doesn't like. He says, Bia Kheris means, Shalai Kedarka. Okay, Torah Rabbana. Also, Lircho, it's mixed as Gufay, Kichol Gufay. Ayim Kippur, it's not just also to wash your whole body, even part of your body. But if you had some waste on you, some mud, that you're allowed to take off. Why? Because the Isr is the Rechitz of Tainug, of, of enjoying yourself. I can't see what time it is, Gershon. Thanks. So, this is not for enjoyment. This is just so you can function as a human being, not being dirty with mud, and soya, so in Mela, that's okay. Because it's not lana. Also, lasuch mixes gufi. You're not to put oil on you. You're not to anoint yourself with oil. Kichol gufi, a small part of your body also. But if he's sick, he has scabs, hard skin, and you need, need to like smooth it out with the oil. Then you can do it. Because it's not lana. A woman could put her hand into water. As we're going to see in two lines. The concern here is Negavasar. What's, what's Negavasar? So we have Machlech Rishonim, famous Machlech Rishonim, the Rosh and the Rashman in, in, uh, in the Mishnah Bura. Is it to get away, to take away the Ruach Ra, as the Gemara is going to say soon? According to Rashi, that's the concern. Concern is Ruach Ra, there's a shade, there's a, a, a bad spirit on your hands that, that comes at night, and you have to get that off. Now, you don't want to feed your kid with that bad spirit on. So mainly you'll have to wash one hand. Wash one hand. Taisa says, I don't understand. You let her wash Nagav Asim Kippur? You wash up to here. According to the Vilna Gain, you just wash up to here. According to everybody else, you wash till your, till your knuckles, right? You guys, what's the problem? What's, what's, why does it have to do with a kid? And, and just, just to have a Ruach Ra, you're going to go to shul with a Ruach Ra in your hand. Nothing to do with your child. You have to wash Nagav Asim. So Taisa says something very interesting. If you look at Taisa's Mishum Shifta, he says that there's something on the food and when you try to feed a child who's four to five years old, if you don't wash your hands, you could choke this kid to death. So it's a, different than Ruach Ra. It's a different type of Ruach. And then he says, four lines from the bottom. How come nobody cares about this? In certain countries, it doesn't exist anymore. Just like people are not concerned about left water that's left overnight uncovered. And eating twins, two, two walnuts in the same thing, two whatever it is, we're, we're not so concerned. Okay, says Tysus, in our days, we don't care about these things so much. It, it doesn't exist. It's not, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a problem. Says the Gemara, The famous Shammai, He, was, he wanted to be Machmer. Anyim Kippur, he says, I'm not feeding my kid. Somebody else do it, not me. Because we're all of, not that, not that he's going to starve his kid, but he, let the babysitter do it. I'm not going to wash my hand. Because we're all of, and they said, you know what? You, you are going to feed your kid. Not only are you going to feed your kid, you're going to wash your hands, both your hands, on your kipper, to show that that's the halacha, my taima, Omar Abayim Shifta, 
and that's the discussion we just, we just discussed. Shifta is the Ruach Ra, according to Rashi, that everybody has every morning on their hands, according to Taisivus, it's a special Ruach Ra that kills children that are four or five years old. Tonor Abban. I guess they didn't daven all day like we do. They had time to go visit the Rebbe. It's a big mitzvah on Yantav to visit your Rebbe. So if you try to be mekayin that mitzvah, or a great person, he could go into the water. Interesting. I went on, on uh, Google. I, I put in cartoon. I, first I typed in cartoon of a person up to the neck in water. Well, stop. I want to have I didn't have any pictures yet. <laughs> this is what I came up with. It's, a, it's an illegal picture. This is what, this is what they had. It's not a cartoon, whatever. Then he did break. Okay. It says, man with beard and side locks in the water up to his neck. Okay? This is like me on the, on the jet ski. We're not going to go there. Fine. <laughs> Same taste. She so goes, see your Rebbe. Anyam Kipper. You go into the water up to your neck. What about a Rabbi Tzaltamid Mai? I'm not exactly sure what the big Shaila here is. He doesn't have, a, ta- a Rebbe doesn't have to go to his Talmud. Okay, but still he wants to teach him Torah. Isn't that a, a big mitzvah? I don't know. For some reason the Gemara understood. It's not so posh. Tashma. I saw Rebbe going in the water. I am Kippur to teach his Talmud. Rav Ashi no. Ahu Rav Chiyabar is the reverse. So you got the story backwards. You have to know the details in order to bring rise. Ahu Rav Chiyabar Ashi the Ozal Gabi the Zir is the opposite Rabbe. It was the Talmud that went to the Rebbe. Okay. Rav Ashara Levnei Aver Yemino Lemeber B'Mayel and Atur Peire. This is also amazing. We would never believe in a million years. Imagine, go to Rabbi. Uh, I need to go watch my field on Yom Kippur. Could I go through the river? Sure, go through the river. No problem. Get yourself wet. Go watch your fruit. What's well, Yom Kippur? You're going to watch? For- yes. There's such a thing as preventing a, a loss, a monetary loss. I Yom Kippur and you let it get wet. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show this. It's a shtikol itzonas, but we have three weeks. I'm going to wait three weeks now. This is from Reb Harry Shalom from Los Angeles sent me a bobble. I don't know. This is the famous bobblehead thing that, uh, whatever. Okay. He's very into it. In his truck, he has one. I don't know if you could see. This is the mask. Talking about masks. We're going to start wearing masks soon, unfortunately. Okay. No, I'm not putting the hat on. After, after, afterwards. Not, it's in the middle of the Gemara. What the hat? Crazy. Rabbi Shara Lebedei. On, this is going to be the watch. Okay, well, the guy went through all the tsar to, to put the hat. I'm not going to wear the hat. Okay, I should wear that all share long. Fine. Rav Shar Levni Aver Yimino Lemebar B'Mayel and Turi Peri. Only Rav Shar Levni Aver Yimino Lemebar B'Mayel and Turi Peri. Only Rav Shar Levni Aver Yimino Lemebar B'Mayel and Turi Peri. Only Rav Shar Levni Aver Yimino Lemebar B'Mayel and Turi Peri. You can go up to your neck in the water and you don't have to worry about it. Rav Yosef Sharlu Levnei Be Tarbu Lemeeber Ma'ayel Lemeisa the Pirka to come to to hear a shir Anyim Kipper. People are very busy traveling Anyim Kipper. Lemeza Aloi Sharlu, but to go back home he didn't allow it. Omer Le'Abaya Imkei Nata Machshil Nas Lavei. If you don't allow him to go back, okay, so he tricked him. He said it's a great shir. Rav said come in the water. So they all come. Then he said that's it. You're gonna have to stay here until Matzim Kipper. This is great. So you got them one year. What about next year? Says the Gemara. Uh, the story happened a little different. Rav Yosef said they could come, they could go, they could go back. Like a hot solid guy. He goes on a call. He drives back. No problem. Why? Because if you don't let him drive back, he's not going to do it next Shabbos. So Abai asks his Rebbe, Rav Yosef, who is blind and who forgot his Torah and the Somebody just wrote me. He forgot his Torah. It has nothing to do with being blind. He forgot his Torah because he got sick, not because he was blind. But why? Abai is asking his Rebbe. I don't understand Rebbe. To come to Shir, great, but why do you let him go home? He's not doing anything at home. He says, Rabbi Yosef, because I don't want them, I want them to feel good about it and come again to the Shir. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yehuda, have a kaima good than our papa. They were there by the on the on the river bank. Amabar the Chazda. There was a place where you could go by, like some sort of bridge by Chazda. Avakhoi, Rabbi Bar Pop and Mahach Gisa, and Rabbi Bar Pop was on the other side. Rabbi Lukali started screaming across the river. You can imagine there's a lot of noise going in the river. 
Could I come across the river, I am Kippur, to talk to you in learning? They scream back. It's not a problem. You have to be careful. Now, if you take your talus and throw it on your shoulder, Rashi brings the Gemara in Shabbos. Are you over and carrying on Shabbos? It's a talus. Yes, 100%. Because a talus is meant to wear a certain way. If you wear it, you just throw it on your shoulder, it's carrying. So if you pick up your, your, your long coat, it, it might look like you're carrying. You be careful not to do so. Okay, yes, you're allowed to go through. Just make sure where your hands are. It shouldn't look like you're carrying it. Just a question. Here's right next to me sitting in Yeshua Aaron Price. On a Friday, a kid, a 14-year-old kid, came into the Makal to buy some stuff. He has it on video. And a few hours later, the kid stepped into a, a pool of water on a trip and was nifter. Right here in Bet Shemesh. Says the Gemara, you cannot go into water. It's not, it's not a proper thing to go into water up to your neck. It's dangerous. Says the Gemara, why? How do we see Masjid Rabbi Yosef? Cholki, I gave them Yishar. Even in the weekday, not allowed. Uksiv, by Yomad Elav Bam. We're going to see that from the Kodesh Hakodashim, there was a stream of water the size of a grasshopper's antenna. That's how thin it was. And as it went, it kept on going, kept on becoming larger and larger, until says the pasuk, by Yomad Elav Bam, a thousand am away from the Beis Hamikdash, we have a reader, but my mea fasim was up to his ankle. That's how much water. Mikan shemutu laavor ada fosai. So you let it go in ankle depth. And then there's another thousand. Now it came up to my knees. It went up to my waist. Nobody's going to breakfast today, so we have an extra two minutes. Uh, but above the waist, you're not allowed to go in. It says, I can't go through. Over there, there's a tremendous... What is it called? You know, uh, a current. There's a five, there's a six, whatever it is. There's a big current that, that could grab people and kill them. So, okay, fine. You know what? Should we stop here in the middle of the line? We'll stop here. It's already late. Have a wonderful day. You want to say? Kim Khas, the Holy Manti Vorei, Kivisa and Gitanam Shin, Vorei Holti, Shila, the Kim Sakhi, the Kim Sakhi, the Thanks for the Gemaras. It's all, 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 don't watch it. Don't listen to it yet. Wait until the video comes out. I didn't just, see it. Yeah. Just Ellie? We, should, we have to call you now? Just Ellie? Who? Rib just Ellie. Rib just Ellie. Ellie. Rib just Ellie. Rib just Ellie. Rib just Ellie. <laughs> I love you so much that it's you just like, me on you. your mind. It's like that's what comes out. I once called you Stroll Goldstein. What did I call him? I called him like Yossi Goldstein. I don't the meme names don't 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 go together. The boy says, Shlemy Rosenberg is on. You have everybody that's behaved. It's not every day that it comes on. Right? Shlemy, what's up, sir?
Baruch Hashem. Now, well, now that uh, Shabbos is so late, it's like those better go to sleep before I catch the second chair. This is it. In two weeks, it starts going down. It starts getting earlier. I can't wait. For me, Matzah is now. Like I, I tried so hard not to push later than nine thirty, but it means that I have to print out whatever I want to print. I have to do all my any any kind of thought that happened over Shabbos. I have to like redo it and like run after I've done and write it down. Make sure I don't forget. You know, it's, it's, it's painful. I need See, more the, 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 the moral of the story is to stop thinking on Shabbos. Clearly. <laughs> Avi, Avi, you're in enough trouble. I saw that guy commenting. <laughs> that comment was yeah. hilarious. Well, Avi, what happened Friday night? Who uh, won? I, unfortunately, the Islanders lost. Uh, game seven, they lost. They lost one nothing in game seven. Correct. So what are you saying? That, uh, basically, you're saying that sponsoring your share for the Islanders doesn't work. <laughs> I genuinely no, I do not want my money back. <laughs> um, Sometimes and, and I, ge- I genuinely do not believe that there really is a kesher between Torah learning and the Islanders play. Um, <laughs> Sometimes it's it for future diaries. So too, so do the sponsors will be for future seasons. Um, well, maybe next, next time sponsor for something that it actually could help the learning. You know, I wanted I wanted to tell you a story. I Anything say it helps. Sir, I remember. On my birthday, I was like 18 or 19 years old. I was in Israel learning. And uh, I decided I need to learn the whole night at the Koto for my birthday. So I go to the Koto. And I didn't realize, like, at a certain time, like, may, back then at least, they just shut down the whole place. I'm the only guy left there. Literally. One person, me. It's like one, two in the morning and nobody's around. I don't know, somewhere around two, three o'clock, a guy shows up with a broom and starts Mo. knocking out the, the, the Open notes. My video. From, starts knocking out the notes from the wall. Like, he's cleaning out the wall, looking for money. And he's part of the, the cult of, he works there officially. And he starts sweeping up the notes. So I went and I grabbed some of these notes. I said, they're, they're hefty anyways. You don't understand, people are asking for bites. For, for to win in sports, like, please, God, I need a fight. Please, God. Don't come with your IP. That's what this is. These notes, not, they always knock out the notes. They, it's, it's, it's a, they usually do it like twi- twice or three times a year. They write their address and phone numbers? They started using, using a the vacuum. Notes. He just went and made, made room for more. He went with yep. the room. No, it wasn't it that time of the year they knocked out all the notes. They buried them. Get them right. when they knock out the notes. And they have all the notes up there. The bird, the house, I no, my uh, I'm going to go see what my kids are doing. Have a wonderful day and easy fast, everyone. A meaningful fast. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Thank you. No, no, you too. You're sure? Uh, we didn't show up. Where's the picture from the kids? Sorry, Mr. Kiddish. Yeah, where's the picture from the Kiddush? I don't know if in the Kiddush, yeah, sure. Two hours we need to wrap the money up for the Kiddush, Mark, Ali, everyone who's sent to you guys. Hey, we sure look high? You sure, you sure, did you, uh, did you bring the leftovers this morning? He can't, he's not, he's he's not, he's not feeling well. Oh, you're for sure. He didn't have a coffee. Literally almost made sense. So it was a big Kiddush to me. I figured.